missed you all. We, um, I don't believe we have any announcements this morning. Does anybody have anything? Marsha? Well, in our Zoom meeting, we talked about starting to take uh, like fresh milk lemonades to the food pantry. You know, we signed up for yes. July, so I talked to Judy, so she, she will do that in July. I don't know if anybody else is going to sign up for August or whatever. But. Okay, and remind us again, it's... How many, do we know how many? Well, they had three last month, we're gonna take four. Okay, if anybody would like to sign up for August to take, and it's the first Tuesday in August, uh, four gallons of milk, four dozen eggs, and four loaves of bread for the food pantry, that would be great. We can't always get those fresh things from the Central Illinois Food Bank. So if somebody would like to sign up for August, who should we contact? I'm happy to coordinate that. Okay. We'll do it, so. okay, let Marcia know if you would do it for August, September, or October. Thank you, Marcia. All right, does anybody have the clicker for the PowerPoint? <laughs> do we have any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship. As you feel comfortable, please stand and we will sing This Is The Day softly together. Boom. She was a Hollander and she 
sheltered uh, Jews in their home during the Nazi invasion and was caught and imprisoned. Due to a clerical error during World War II, Corey Ten Boom was released from Ravensbrook one week, one week before all the women her age were killed. She began traveling and telling the story of her family and what she and Betsy had learned in the concentration camp. And she recounts one story in particular. And this I'm going to let her tell it in her own words. She said, it was in a church in Munich that I saw him, a balding, heavyset man in a gray overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. People were filing out of the basement room where I had just spoken. It was 1947, and I had come from Holland to defeated Germany with the message that God forgives. And that's when I saw him working his way forward against the others. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat. The next moment I saw his blue uniform and his visored cap with that symbol on it. It came back with a rush, that huge room with its harsh overhead lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, and the shame of walking naked past all these people. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath her parchment skin. Betsy, how thin you were. Betsy and I had been arrested for concealing Jews in our home during the Nazi occupation of Holland. This man had been a guard at Ravensbrück concentration camp where we were sent. You mentioned Ravensbrück in your talk, he said. I was a guard in there. He didn't remember me. But since that time, he went on, I have become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there, but I would like to hear it from your lips as well. Fräulein, his hand came out. Will you forgive me? And I stood there. I, whose sins had every day been forgiven and could not. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow and terrible death simply by the asking? It could not have been many seconds he stood there, hand held out to me, but it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And still I stood there with the coldness clutching at my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me. I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the rest. And so, woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder. It raced down my arm and sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner. And I want you to hear this line very clearly. She says, I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. I 
had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. Can you imagine? Hey, let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about what happened in, inside the guard first. Let's talk about the guard. He knew God had forgiven him. And he listened to Corey Ten Boom talk about forgiveness, God's forgiveness. And now he had received from forgiveness from her. There's still one other person who needs to supply forgiveness for him. And that's going to be the hardest one yet. Who is that? That would be himself. Corey forgave him, but he still has to live with the knowledge of all that he willfully did to other people. Even knowing that God forgives him, even knowing that Corey forgives him, he still lives every day with that knowledge and struggles with that. So is it fair to say that when Corey forgave him, he was off the hook and gave himself a get out of jail free card? I doubt it. If he was a Christian as he professed in here, he's wrestling with that. So, the forgiveness is not a get-out-of-jail-free card or, okay, check, you're no longer responsible, it's all okay. What is forgiveness? Well, let's talk about what happened within Corey in that moment. Did she want to forgive this man? No. She knew she should. She knew it was incumbent by her faith to do so, but uh-uh, she could have had an out. She wanted out. But she did it. Not by her strength, but by God's strength. And what happened? She felt the love of God in a way she never had before. She experienced a liberation in that moment. If she were here to talk to us today, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I wonder if we asked her if she had not forgiven him, what life would be like. And I wouldn't be surprised if she said that she felt imprisoned in a way, that she was kind of stuck in that, in that time and unable to move beyond it still stuck with what happened in that camp. But when she forgave him, she did not say, okay, it's over, it's none of it matters. What she was saying by forgiving him is, that event and what you did is no longer going to imprison me. I'm going to be free from this. If you ever want to keep somebody close to you, resent them. If you have someone in your life that you resent, they are with you a lot of the time. They're going to be on your mind when you wake up in the morning. They're going to be on your mind when you try to sleep at night and when you wake up at one o'clock and two o'clock and three o'clock and four o'clock and five o'clock. Whenever you sit down to eat, they're going to disrupt your digestion. The surest way to keep somebody close to you is to Bear a resentment for them. Forgiveness is removing that person and that resentment from holding you within. When Corey forgave this man, she said, I'm letting you go so I can be free. That is a powerful powerful thing to do to experience and folks it's the hardest work of faith that is the hardest work of faith and we don't wanna <laughs> I never feel like more of a toddler 
than when I'm wrestling with myself over forgiving someone because, doggone it, I just don't want to. <laughs> and I can't on my own. It all starts with the, God, I need your help here. And you know, this week I was wrestling with the sentence and that two-letter word, as. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now, what does as mean here? Is it in the time of? In other words, are we saying, hey, God, as I'm praying and asking for your forgiveness, please take this time to also forgive me and forgive others that have sinned against me. That's a pretty short window in there. I think the Lord's Prayer is, what, 20 seconds? It's to wash your hands and say the Lord's Prayer. It's a good 20 second deal there but so this one line within that 20 seconds is maybe a second let's be generous and give it two or three so two or three seconds then if we interpret as as in the time of that's not a lot of time is it well what if we looked at this word as in the manner of so god forgive me my sins in the manner that I forgive those who sin against me. Now I've created a problem for myself. Because I'm back to, I don't want to. <laughs> and I've set up a standard by which then I'm going to be forgiven. And I don't know that God works that way. I don't know that we can put limits on or set free what God does or what God wills or what God wants. So I think we got to push past that a little further in that two little, two letter little word. Forgive us as we forgive. I think it's an acknowledgement of understanding. Forgive us as we forgive, as we have been forgiven an acknowledgement that this is God's business, this is God's work, this is godly action. God is all about doing this, and it's not on a merit system, but it's because it's in the nature of God to do that. God forgives because that's who God is. So acknowledging that God is a forgiving God, I want to be a part of what God is doing in this world. I want to join in what God's doing. I want to be a part of that work. I want to be a part of this kingdom. So as God has forgiven, forgive me too. And help me to forgive others. This Lord's Prayer is really tricky, isn't it? I mean, we say it often and we've said it so much it's a part of who we are i think it's in the fiber of our being if, if our memory was wiped clean and somebody came in and said the lord's prayer i think that it's so deeply within us that we would be able to say it along with the person even if we didn't know it but it's a part of us and yet when we take the time to really look at what's going on here it's a little frightening to be honest with you. I mean, if you have learned nothing from me, do not pray for patience, because guess what? You're gonna get an opportunity to learn patience, and you're not gonna like it. I'm just kidding, pray for patience. But when we pray the Lord's Prayer, you know, we begin by, what are we going to call God? How do we understand God? And then acknowledging God's holiness and that God's name is holy. And then after that, we pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. And that's going to mess a lot of stuff up for us that we like. That's really stepping on our toes there. But we pray that anyway because we trust that God will bring God and ultimately it's going to change for us, but it'll be okay. And then give us what we need, God. Not really what we want, but what we need. Oh, and then forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The Lord's Prayer is heavy business, but it's godly business. 
you want to be a part of what God is doing in this world, and you pray for God to come apart and make this a reality in this life, and you ask God for what you need, and then you and you seek after this hardest work. It's a powerful model of prayer. Have you known anyone that has forgiven something greater than you could think about? I do. And I had a conversation with this person and she said if she had not forgiven him, she would have been entrapped. She said, but by forgiving him, she said, I was free from that. I was free to be my own person. And that doesn't get to define who I am any longer. Forgiveness, sometimes it's easy. If you accidentally bump into somebody, oh, I'm sorry. I forgive you. It's okay. It's a little bit different than when there's been an act of violence or an act that has changed that person forever or their family or whatnot. So there's a whole range of things and it's the hardest work of faith. So do it. Just do it. Do it because it's hard. Do it because it's important. Do it because you seek after this life that God offers. Do it because in doing so, you can't do it by yourself. You can only do it by the love and grace and power of God. So even if you can't, start by asking God and go from there. God gets the last word, always. And that word is love. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have many joys and concerns in our community and in our world. Would anyone like to share how you've been blessed this week? Jim? We were blessed with some good news about Rob Cornwell. <clears throat> he will not have to have open heart surgery. Excellent. He uh, gave you a little background. Uh, when he was 10 days old, he had open heart surgery to repair an arterial transposition. And so, you know, he had annual visits and they keep an eye on things and he deals with the cardiologist in Springfield. So when he went this year, a couple of months ago, he said, I think it's St. Louis to Barnes and talked to a heart surgeon, the heart surgeon, and a couple of cardiologists, and they all came to the same conclusion that at this time it was not necessary to do anything for the city of next year. So we were blessed with that good news that for this time right now that uh, he's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are other blessings. It's a blessing to be back here. It is. It is. We have a blessing. Yeah. Uh, they're not here today, but it's the twins' third birthday. Mm -hmm. And they are so excited to be three. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you couldn't imagine. They're just over the moon. I can't believe they are three already. Are there other joys? Nancy? Uh, I saw Dave. It's been a long journey for her. Other joys? We also have concerns. Um, 
Helen Stahl wanted to mention that she wanted to be here today, but her niece is coming down, so she's isolating until after that visit. But she says hi and would love to see you all and will soon. Do we have concerns? Can we talk to Helen? Um, I would ask your prayers for Andy. <laughs> Uh, what started out as just an uncomfortable back a couple days ago has turned into some kidney stones. So please, please pray for him. <laughs> Are there other concerns? Actually, I have another blessing I'd like mm -hmm. to share. The other day when I was gone, Dave had been trimming limbs on the tree and he chose them with like bungee strap thing and a, anyway he told me when I got home that as he was pulling it with the tractor to the garden this one limb the thing broke and came and hit him in the back of the head oh my and he said I thought I was going to pass out and he had a little I mean put ice on it he was so he's okay praise God it's a miracle it is a miracle and it's good to be hard-headed. <laughs> I said God gave us hard skulls for a reason, but I can't remember there. Other than some sore muscles, it's amazing. Well, thank goodness. Yes. And I told him, don't do that while I'm not home again. <laughs> Other joys or concerns? Let us pray. Holy God, we enter your presence with great joy. For you are the one who loves each of us beyond all measure. The daily reminder of your goodness is reflected all around us in the creative displays that dazzle our senses. Thank you, O oh God, for it is in these moments that we pause amazed at your goodness and we stop to recognize that you alone are God and worthy of praise. Compassionate God, you know the particular concerns that bow us down today. How we are overflowing with concerns and worries and stress about our loved ones and our community and our country and our world. And God, we pray that your wisdom would pour out upon all leaders in all places that your best divine intentions could be realized. And God, we pray for, the, for your healing for all of those who need it. Hear us now as we pray. God of all life, we long for the gift of your vision. We know how easily we fall out of step with your spirit. Reorient our path that we might look for glimpses of your kingdom, breaking into the midst of the ordinariness of life, that our vision would be your vision, and we would be inspired to risk enough to treat each one we meet with dignity and respect. Gracious God, help us to live that we might be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. Through him who has taught us to pray, we offer these prayers. Amen. In the offertory sentence this morning, we're not passing around an offertory tray, but it is in the entranceway there, and I believe there's one in the entranceway to the north door. So I invite you to, if you have gifts to bring, to leave those there. But from Luke 6, 38, he says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give back. And as we metaphorically come around this table today, I invite you to take your communion. And if you're wearing white, hold it away from you. Just say, don't ask. 
<laughs> the wafer is on top, and if you pull the tab, you'll get to the juice in between. But we, are, we come to the table today because we are invited to this table. Not by me, not by those who have prepared it, but by God who has made it. We are invited. We are given a place next to all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are forgiven, and then we are sent. So with that in mind, let us take communion this morning together. Loved, loved, and free. And free. May God bless us today and always. 